Hello, my name is Chris LeClay. I'm the senior aquarist here at the Estuarium at the Dolphin Island Sea Lab. And I'm in charge of the Gulf of Mexico Gallery, which we are currently in. And I'm going to be talking to you today about one of my favorite animals I care for, our uh, common octopus, and as well as all of our other octopus species. So this girl we have here, it is a girl. We've had her now for 18 months. Um, for octopus species, they live for about two years total in captivity. They actually live shorter lives in the wild. Um, for her though, at 18 months, well, we've had her for 18 months. She's about 20 months old. So she's about the equivalent of being in her 80s. So you can see she's a little less active than she would be if she were a little younger. So how can you tell how old an octopus is? We can't tell exactly. We just know based on how long we've had her and certain cues they give. So as they get older, like us, they go through certain stages of life. So as they get older, they do a thing that's called curling, which is kind of where they twirl their tentacles around and kind of get tighter curls. Kind of like that, and you'll see them do it a lot. That's one of the stages. They also start to lose their eyesight the older they get. Just like we go through stages in old life, they kind of do the same thing. So. We've had her at this facility for 18 months, so based on her still activeness, I judge her about 20 months old. And you said something interesting. You can tell that she's losing sight in one of her eyes? Yes, yeah, she's actually losing eyesight in her left eye. And you can tell because normally their eyes are dark black, but you can kind of see a little bit on that right eye right there. You can kind of see the black pupil. On the other eye, it's actually going light, um, kind of like almost cataracts over the eye. Uh, Isabella and Leo from Alabama, they say hi and thank you for being here. Um, they also want to know, how many hearts does an octopus have? An octopus actually has three hearts. One that controls pumping the blood through their body like our heart does, and two that deal with getting the blood from their gills to the, um, to the main heart. And Leo wants to know, how do they breathe? They breathe through a tube that's called a siphon tube. It's going to be this weird kind of tube on the side of their head. They use that to kind of pull water in, push it over their gills, which are inside the, this mantle, and then push it back out again. Um, is their ink poisonous? Uh, Reed from kindergarten wants to know. Their ink is actually poisonous. They use it to scare off predators. It actually blocks their sight and it takes away their ability to smell and taste. Um, but in long thing, it can be deadly to them. So that's why we never want her to ink in the tank, because it can actually kill her. And how do they change colors? Lillian, who's in second grade, wants to know. They have these specialized cells called chromatophores, so they can expand and contract to change their color. Aubrey wants to know how many suction, suction cups they have. I don't know the exact number, but they line their entire arms with them. And these suction cups are unique in that they can uh, taste with these suction cups. So if an octopus ever touches you, they're actually tasting you. Do we taste good to an octopus? <laughs> Not too good, but they, that's also how they identify people. So octopus will categorize people based on um, how you treat them. So since I'm her main caretaker, she's quite fond of me. So every time she touches me, she remembers what I taste like. And so she knows I'm the one that feeds her. Oh, cool. So what's your favorite thing that you've learned about octopus? My favorite thing I've learned is just how intelligent they are. I mean, they say they're as smart as a house cat, but knowing that they have the ability to remember people and, and to categorize you and to know that the minute she sees me walk up every day, she gets very excited because she knows I'm here and I'm, I'm here to take care of her. So very smart, very smart. Um, Isabella, the one in Chris's hand is not alive. No. Um, <laughs> how many species of octopus are there? There's around 300 different species. And have we ever had an octopus escape that you know of? Not that I know of. Um, the species we have here found in the Gulf don't like to be out of the water, so they typically don't leave their tanks, which is kind of a good thing. We don't have to worry about her traveling next door and snacking on any fish. Now, but you have said before you've taken care of an octopus that when you put your hand in the tank, it'll wrap around you. Yeah. Oh, she'll do the same thing when she... Once she knows we're there, she'll wrap her fingers around you and kind of try playing with your fingers. They're actually quite strong. I mean, for her, she can almost pull something out of my hands for her roughly smaller size. What species of octopus do we have in the Gulf? 
We had three different species in the gull. The Atlantic octopus, also known as the common octopus, is what she is. The Mexican four-eyed, which looks very similar to her. They just have black spots on either side of their body. And the pygmy octopus, which only grows about three inches long, and we don't see those too often. They're really good at hiding. How many babies on average do they have? It's usually a couple thousand, um, but with the couple thousand they have, only about two or three actually make it to adulthood. Uh, Crawford, who's in first grade, he wants to know how much suction does it have? So I guess like how strong is their suction? Pretty strong. Um, for her, she can't leave a mark, but the giant Pacific, the largest one, if they stick onto you too hard, they can actually leave red circles from where they stuck to you. Jennings, who's in first grade, he'd like to know how long they live. They live, um, for the ones we have on display here, they only live for a max of two years in captivity. In the wild, they live for about one year to about 18 months, a year and a half. So what's their predator? Their predators are um, larger fish, rays, sharks, dolphins, whales, as well as each other. They um, are very territorial and they are known to actually fight and kill each other. Uh, Leo wants to know if the blue ring octopus is in our area. No, they are only found in Australia, thankfully. Why thankfully? Because they can kill you within minutes because of their venomous bite. Wow. Uh, Chrissy wants to know, how can you tell a boy from a girl? That's actually from Ralph in second grade. All right, so it's a very particular way, but there's a way to tell. So you look at the front of the octopus, this is what's considered the front, and you count three arms to the right, which is gonna be this arm back here. And for females, they're gonna have these suction cups, these suckers, all the way to the tip of their uh, finger, which, their arm, which you can see. Males, on the other hand, will be missing the last section of uh, suckers. Wow, that's kind of interesting. So it's, there's a way to do it, but it's very particular. Very particular. Um, um, let's see, let me go back. Isabella, if they lose their legs, can they regrow it? They can regrow their arms, yes. This one actually has an arm that it regrew, and you can tell because it's much shorter than the rest of it. So it was still regrowing this arm when it passed. Um, let's see. How much do you know about gestation and mating of an octopus? All right. So um, for them, mating is kind of deadly for them. Um, for males, they only get one time to mate. After that, they go, um, they'll find a female, they'll mate with them and then they go to a state of dementia and they'll die about roughly two weeks later. For females, they once they fertilize their eggs, they can store um, the sperm for up to a couple months. Once they do, they lay their eggs and then they stay in their cave and they will push water over their eggs till the eggs hatch and they will not eat, they will not leave, they will not sleep until the babies hatch and then they die of exhaustion shortly afterwards. So they get one shot. <laughs> Sophia, she's eight years old. She's in Memphis, Tennessee, and she wants to know oh, how it's a boy and a girl. Let's just look right back at that again for Sophia. You said it's on the third leg. Yep, and, and it's going to be the suckers all the way to the very end of the arm. So if she does, if they don't have those suckers. Yeah, if it's just smooth right here, it's going to be a boy. Wow. Um, do people fish for octopus? People do. It's considered a delicacy, especially in Europe and Africa. Neil, Nell and Nate ask why they have three hearts. Why they have three, just their unique body type and the way all their organs are just situated in here is that they need one just to fo fun focus on pump pumping the blood all the way to all their arms and the others have to be worried about um, getting the blood, the oxygen from the blood from the gills. Very cool. So could we just go out to the beach and see one? Typically, don't find them in the shallows, um, not around here. If you were over on the Pacific Coast, where there's tidal pools, you'll actually see them right on shore. Um, but for the ones we have here, they typically hang out a little bit further offshore, not too far, but anywhere there's structure, you can usually find one. But they're really good at hiding and camouflaging, so there might be one there and you not even realize it. Um, we missed the second half of Marla's question was, how would a fisherman catch them? Um, usually by scuba diving, they have to go down, find one, and then quickly grab it. Um, which they're really good escape artists, so <laughs> tricky. <laughs> Very tricky. Um, do they drop ink like in the movie? So do we have an issue where when we have them, they ink in their tank? Or We have had ones ink in their tank. Um, when we do that, we do a big water change to get the ink out. But it's, 
it's like a cloud. It disperses out and will darken the tank. Okay. Not black, but quite close. Um, no, Abby, that's not the baby you saw in the tank. Um, Aubrey wants to know why the end of the boy's arm is smooth. I'm assuming that's just... It has to do with reproduction and that sort of stuff. Okay. London, who's in second grade, would like to know if the suction cups can damage a person's skin if they attach to it. Not the ones we have here, but as I said with the Giant Pacific, the large one, their suction cups can get, you know, roughly about that size, and they can leave some red marks on you. Not enough to cause permanent damage, but just to leave a mark on your skin for a moment. Crawford, who's seven, asks, how do their arms grow back? They just, it's like octopus regeneration, is that the new arm doesn't become a new octopus, but the severed arm doesn't. Um, but they just grow back slowly. It becomes a short, little, small arm and just kind of grows back on out, the way the lizard's tail does. Christian, who's five years old, asks if you can show him what his mouth is. Well, so their mouth is going to be in the center of all their arms. It's going to be that little, small hole down there. Might be a little hard to see. Oh, wait, now I got it right here. So their mouth is right there in the very center. And in their center of their mouth is what's known as their beak, which is the only bone they have in their body. The only bone. And you said something interesting before we started this. You said that they can get as small as their beak? Yep. So since that is their only bone in their body, their beak is roughly the same size as their eyes. So for the species we have here, roughly the size of a pen cap, um, they can compress their body to the size of their beak and fit through small objects. Really cool. So, who are the friends that they have in their tank? So, the, the guys that are in here with them are pencil urchins. They are a type of sea urchin. Um, they just mostly are clean up the tank for us. They eat detritus waste. Uh, Dempsey from Tuscaloosa, who's six, would like to know if they have a brain. They do. They actually have nine brains. One true brain, and then eight other kind of pseudo brains in their arms. So, each arm is controlled by a different brain. Yeah, so each arm can act independently of the other one. Um, Candy, who's Kennedy, I'm sorry, Kennedy, who's seven, wants to know what happened to our the octopus that you're holding. This one was one we had in the past that was on display that passed away from old age, but we use her now to show people and teach people about the octopus. Since you can't really touch the one we have in our tank, you can actually get to touch this preserve specimen. Our uh, Isabella, who's seven, she wants to know: Are octopus in danger? None of the local species that we have, and as far as I'm aware, not a lot of species out there are. Leah wants to know, what's the beak made of? Is it like a crab shell? No, it's made of keratin, so the same stuff your hair and fingernails are made out of. Very cool, because we learned the other day from Nicole that a turtle shell is made of keratin, too. Yep, it's a very useful material. Uh, Jessica Lenz from Florence, how long is the typical lifespan of an octopi? Um... For the species we have here, it's two years in captivity. Um, the longest living one is the giant Pacific, which is also the largest one, and that is only five years in captivity. They live about half that lifespan in the wild since reproduction is deadly to them. And you also told me that the last two octopus that we've had on display have been very destructive. Yeah, each, each octopus has their own personality. They each have their own little quirks. Um, this one and the previous octopus we had, um, get a little too curious and like to just try to tug on things and pull on things so we've had to screw some things down in her tank and uh, line the top of her tank with astroturf. Weirdly enough astroturf, the fake grass, their suction cups can't stick to it. So if you want to keep them from trying to mess with something you just put fake grass on it. Uh, Sailor who's seven wants to know how many types of octopus are there in the world? There are over 300 different species. And Leo, are they friendly? And how many can live in a tank? They are rather friendly to us. I mean, they they know we're not food, and they are generally curious about us. We're really weird looking to them, the way they're really weird looking to us. Um, but typically, you can't keep more than one in a tank together, because if it's a male and female, they will reproduce and pass on. Um, but if it's two males or two females, they'll get territorial and they'll fight over space. So it might not might seem like there's a lot of space in here for two octopus, but this is actually not enough space for two octopus. They will get very territorial really quickly. Um, Beverly wants to know, which is bigger, a male or a female? 
they're roughly the same size. Uh, males might be a little smaller, but not drastically. Um, Will, who's six, wants to know how many octopus species can be found here near Dolphin Island? We talked about this a minute ago. Yeah, three different species. The common, the uh, Mexican four-eyed, and the pygmy. Um, and I think we have time for a couple more questions. So we have Virginia, who's a first grader. What's their natural habitat? Natural habitat for the species we have here is um, dike structures, so rocky, outcro uh, al rocky alcoves, um, rig legs, shell debris, anywhere that they can find a lot of space to hide and camouflage into. <laughs> Final question from Aubrey. Wants to know how all the baby octopus are caught that are served on Chinese buffets. I don't really know if we know that one. No, but um, some octopus species can actually be raised in captivity. Um, unfortunately, none of the species we have here, but that might be where they're getting it from. Gotcha. All right, last question. What do they eat? What do they eat? Um, they're not too picky. Um, they, one we have here, we feed her a variety of different things like you know, shrimps, um, different types of fish. She actually likes squid too, um, but her favorite snack which is also sometimes why you'll see small little shells on the bottom, is hermit crabs. Her favorite treat is hermit crabs, so she will eat the crab and leave the little shells or dinner plates behind. Well, Carissa, thank you so much for taking time um, with us. Next week we're going to chat with you on lionfish. Yep. Um, and we have a whole digital learning page now um, that we invite everybody to check out. And uh, so we'll see them next week. Thank you, Carissa. Thank you. Bye. Bye.